break even and target operating income problem four. Papaya Corporation has the following information. Sales price $9 per unit. Variable cost $5 per unit. Fixed cost $21,000 per month. Volume 10,500 units per month. The company believes that the volume will go up to 13,000 units if the company reduces its sale price to $7. How would this change affect operating income? This is an excellent question. This is exactly the type of, of question that a manager or a business owner might be considering from a managerial standpoint. You've got the interplay of, okay, well, we understand supply and demand. We understand supply and demand curve where the price that we set it at, it might be creating less demand if we lower our price in terms of what we're selling at from $9 per unit to $7 per unit, we're going to be able to increase the number of units. Our volume will go up from 10,500 per month to 13,000 per month. And we want to see the effect on operating income, which you can kind of think of as profit. Operating income and managerial accounting questions, we're basically taking the sales minus variable costs and fixed costs related to production. It's holding aside the selling and general administrative costs and whatnot. So you can kind of think of it in a managerial setting as profit, similar idea. Similar idea. This question is all about before versus after. Comparing the before situation versus the after situation. When we're doing break-even questions or target profit questions, you just simply use the formula, fixed costs plus the desired profit, which is if it's break-even is zero, divided by contribution margin ratio or contribution margin per unit, depending on whether you're solving for the break, um, break-even in dollars or the target profit in dollars or number of units. This question is just simply plugging and chugging before and after. That's all you're really doing here. You just need to go through and calculate what will be the change in operating income? Again, operating income. All operating income is you take sales minus your variable costs minus your fixed costs. That's all we're taking into account here. And we're given all that information. So the before, before we're selling 10,500 units at $9 each. And after we're selling 13,000 units at $7 each. Now, some of you that are gifted with math, you might be able to just go in here and boom, you can figure this out. You might not know the exact amount, but you can figure out the trend. You can figure out the trend. I'm going to go through the steps with you. I'm going to go through the steps with you. Let's start with the before situation. Now, one thing I love about managerial accounting, there's so many different ways to get to the answer. You can use total numbers. You can use per unit numbers. So many different ways. So many different ways. In previous problems, I went through the totals when doing operating income. For this one, I'm going to do it by unit to show you that, again, there's power in, in doing different ways. So one student might do it one way or one, you know, one person might do it another way, one manager, another person might do it in a total approach. This time, I'm going to do it per unit. So the idea here in getting operating income, it's really sales minus variable cost is the same thing as contribution margin minus fixed cost. You can also do the same per unit to get the operating income per unit and multiply it by the number of units. So we're going to do a per unit approach. So we're going to do a per unit approach in this calculation to get the total amount in the end to maybe save time if you have it broken down by unit like we do here. We have the amounts broken down by unit and it can save you time because if you have a time pressured exam, whether you're taking a certified certification exam um, or whatever it is, your, your professor just has a very time pressured exam. The way that information is presented to you, if it's given to you in totals, do totals. If it's given to you in dollars per unit, I would do that. I'm going to do that to show you that it's a lot faster. But again, if you prefer the total approach, you can still do that here. So first thing in the before, the contribution margin equals sales per unit minus the variable cost per unit, which here, sales per unit is $9 per unit. Again, the number we're using minus the variable cost, which we're told is $5 per unit. That means the contribution margin per unit is $4. So $4 per unit. $4 per unit. Okay. Now what we're going to do with the $4 per unit is we're going to multiply that by the 10,500 units. So we're going to take the contribution margin per unit of $4 per unit and multiply that by the 10,500 units, which is the before situation. Again, given to us in the problem right here. And that is our total contribution margin. We're going to subtract away the fixed cost because it's given to us in total, which is $21,000 per month. And when we do that, we're going to get the operating income. We're going to get the operating income. So the total contribution margin, again, is 10500 times 4 minus the fixed cost 
of $21,000, when you get that total and subtract away from $21,000, you're going to get operating income of $21,000. $21,000. So that is the operating income in the before situation. That is the operating income in the before situation. All right, let's do the after now. So in the after, put a little line here. After, we're going to do the same thing. Contribution margin is sales minus variable costs. The sales amount here now is $7 per unit. The variable cost has stayed the same at $5 per unit. Contribution margin now is two, $2 per unit rather than five or $4. So it goes from $4 per unit before to $2 per unit after, but again, the amount of units goes up. It increases, goes up. Okay, so now we're going to take our $2 per unit we just calculate. We're going to multiply that by the 13,000 units, which is again the change. That's going to give us our total contribution margin. Fixed costs are going to remain the same. There's no change in this problem. We're not told, oh, fixed costs change. We're not told anything about the change in fixed costs. So we're going to subtract away $21,000 and we're going to get a operating income of $5,000. So $5,000 operating income. Uh-oh. As you see, operating income has gone down before from after. It was $21,000 before $5,000 after. And again, you can think of this operating income as kind of like your profit. This is production profit. There's, of course, still selling and general administrative expenses. So how would this change affect operating income? Let's compare before and after. And you always compare the before with the after. So going from before to after, there is a decrease in operating income. It's decreasing by, and the amount is $21,000 before minus $5,000 after. That equals $6,000. Sorry, $16,000. My apologies. <laughs> Let me put $6,000. $16,000. So this, this is changing the operating income by $16,000. This is not a good good situation to be in. And this is the kind of thing that, that managers, they use managerial accounting to do. This is a very, very powerful tool doing this type of analysis. This is a perfect example of just showing you, all you got to do is just understand um, operating income, what it is, and before and after. I showed you using contribution margin and using per unit. And again, you can do per units total, however you like to think of it, whatever best helps you. But just simply comparing before and after, you see that operating income goes down by $16,000, and that is the answer.